Hello and welcome to the Vector virtual session of the Adaptive 2020. Well, under normal circumstances, we would have met in a fancy hotel, would have some delicious food together. I'm sorry for that. I can't offer you today. You have to cook for yourself and I welcome you from my home office, which I uh, tidied up only for you. And I hope you, you still appreciate that. My name is Thomas Drexler. I'm working for Vector for the department which is developing simulation and testing systems. This is also the topic for the next couple of minutes, how to simulate and test out of the adaptive systems and issues. But I don't only want to focus on adaptive, but on service oriented in general. If we look on to the, the automotive industry, we see the whole branches in, in a big change. We, you, you constantly hear about automated driving, connectivity, the, the idea of uh, the car being a smartphone on wheels. And from this whole complex of, of topics, I want to point out three ideas, which I uh, think that are relevant for the simulation and the testing. One is the dynamic communication. We now don't have any more fixed layout set up at compile point, but the communication changes during, well, during its running. Participants can appear or disappear. The whole communication is service oriented, which means it's there's a decoupling. The sender is not really known by the receiver of the, of the uh, information. This is the main idea of service oriented, which I will speak a bit more about very soon. And um, the whole communication, also the data types are much more complex. For example, if we think about an ADAS application that is detecting objects and well, it will only transmit something if it has detected something, but it's not known if there are five cars uh, or uh, one bicycle and one dog or whatever. So this is something which can't be handled with the, well, with the communication structure that we had in the past. So we have to think about how we can better handle this. You maybe have already heard uh, a lot about service-oriented architecture if you watched uh, other videos from my colleagues. Just a few ideas when we speak about SOA, there is always somebody who's providing the information and somebody who's consuming it. So clients, client or consumer versus provider or server. And they communicate via a defined interface with methods, events, etc. And um, how this is concretely working, this is not known by the by the client, whether the ECU communication is over the vehicle network or whether it's inside of the ECU only software interfaces, or maybe going out of the car into the back end, maybe via, via some kind of dispatching point a service broker. And um, to realize that, of course, always some kind of middleware implementation is needed. I want to point out some IP because it's very settled. Meanwhile, in the automotive industry or MQTT, which is often used in Internet of Things applications. And we see this is more and more growing together. Okay, before we go to the new approach, let's have a look back how we made a simulation in the last uh, 15, 20 years within Canoe. We always had this classic bus oriented and bottom up approach. So we had some kind of CAN, LIN, FlexRay, Ethernet communication. Uh, we loaded a database. We said, okay, I want to simulate a node. Um, we use an interaction layer DLL, which knows how to interpret the DBC file or whatever, and knows, okay, my, I'm in the role of IC, so I need to transmit these 10 frames cyclically and I receive that frames. This is working fine for Canlin, FlexRay, 
for some IP was difficult, but somehow worked. But we came to a point that this is not working anymore for things like MQTT. And we said, okay, uh, let's do it exactly the other way around. Let's start with a top-down approach where the application and its interface is in, in the focus. This is something that we see much more um, in the future. So um, we created so-called communication setup. You see here participants. Participant could be something comparable to an ECU, but not necessarily. And here you see the focus is on the ADAS participant who is communicating with other participants. And there are always endpoints. And in between the endpoints, you will come to know very soon something which is called communication object. The participants can always take over different roles, either consumer or provider of an interface. OK, um, to compare and maybe to make it easier to do understand why we did all this, what can be done in the old, what can be done in the new world. So simulation of CAN, LIN, FlexRay, Ethernet, whatever, and have a concrete serialized communication. This is the old world. This is partly also working in the new world, in the new communication setup, especially for Ethernet. But we can't only have a concrete serialized communication, but also have an abstracted. Um, so we directly use the defined interfaces. For example, if we have a virtual outer size WC, it'll speak against the RTE interfaces. And this is directly connectable to Canoe with the new communication setup. For outer size adaptive, we also can only use the new communication setup. I already spoke about MQTT or comparable um, protocols. And in principle, any piece of software will be very soon, with the help of Canoe for software and an adaption layer, be connectable to the communication setup. And another thing which has to be known is um, for Ethernet, all new features will only be implemented for the new communication setup. OK, um, before we dig in too deep, maybe a couple of words about new terms, new wordings. I already used the term CO, communication object. That's the concrete implementation of a service with methods, events, etc. So there is a so-called model editor. Come to it later. Here you would see the prototypes, for example, uh, a method which is defined. And if you make a concrete instance of it, a service out of it, this will become a communication object. And you would see it here in the communication details. And you would always see, OK, this service or this CO is connecting two endpoints. Here, the address and the UGW. This is how such a CO could look like if we um, look at it in VCDL, which is a domain specific language and could be used alternatively to an ARXML file, for example. So you see, it's quite straightforward and human readable. I already mentioned MQTT. Um, because this is something which we found is not quite well working with the CO con concept. So there is something more abstracted called distributed object. Um, I can't go in details for now, but if you're interested in that and MQTT, just use the contact me button and we can set up uh, a session where we can take the time that is needed for explaining this concept or maybe your use case. OK, <clears throat> I already said we have participants that speak with each other. And there are different ways of how to do this. And how this is done, this is defined in the so-called binding. It could be either an abstract binding, something like 
the communication over the Altisa RTE or a concrete binding, which we need if we want to see a some IP frame in the, in the trace window. And um, how this is all looking like, how this is all working, I'll show to you in live in the, in the canoe directly. So I already prepared um, a new configuration, but it's only an empty one. I can close this uh, window because I don't need the simulation setup anymore. I will use the communication setup instead. And the first thing, as before, is I load a database. I'm now loading an Autosa Classic database. And uh, OK, this would be uh, the same also in the old approach. I could also load Fibex or this VCDL or an Autosa Adaptive file. I now switch to the options. Um, there is an import filter, which you should set if you have a specific OEM configuration, because like in every good standard, everyone uses it a bit different. And we need to take care about that in the import filter. OK, um, now I imported it. What is maybe um, important to know is you always have to apply the changes you made. And yeah, this is the first thing which was done. This picture you already saw before. I look on the participants. So this would be comparable to the ECU view. You see, OK, ADAS is communicating with these other participants. Head unit is only part, uh, communicating with this one. I now see they are all configured as remote. And what I now do is I create a full simulation. If, of course, let's say the head unit uh, would be as a real ECU on your desk, um, then you would switch it to, uh, to real. Next thing that I said, OK, we need to do the binding because I want to see a, con um, a concrete and serialized communication. Via drag and drop, I pull the groups of communication objects in here, and that's it. Um, no, that's it not completely. I have to set this switch to Ethernet um, because I now have a complete simulation. And uh, this means um, if no real ECU is connected, I would only see the abstract communication. So for the pure software simulation, and if I want to see um, the frames in the trace, I need to set that switch. Furthermore, I open the model editor. I already said before, in here you could check how is, uh, is the service implemented. For example, this drive status, you see it's uh, transmitting PDUs. Up here you would see the prototypes. For the sum IP binding, um, in this case, in the database, the service discovery was not activated, so I have to do this by myself. Okay, that's it. You would now uh, already see some communication. I will still extend it, it a bit. Um, you could use the model generator. Maybe you know it from the, uh, from the old uh, simulation setup. Don't mix it up. With this one, this one is only working for simulation setup. This is the one to use for the Comco. But you would only see these two um, objects if one OEM package is implemented. I now still activate um, this switch. So I see the AutoSAR PDUs automatically transmitted. If you have uh, implemented or installed um, an OEM package, 
and use the model generator. This is done automatically. I don't have this option currently because the, um, the, the standard vector model is not available yet. I start the communication and uh, let's open a trace window and right away I see communication which looks very uh, alike as you might know it from uh, the old simulation setup. Uh, here with, with Autosar, PDUs, etc. For the moment, we only have um, uh, initial values um, transmitted to add some primitive application. I would simply add a panel. You could also use a uh, couple or C sharp code. But for the moment, and as I only have very limited time, I just make a, a small uh, panel. I go to the participants. You could also use a different way of uh, navigation. I go to the sender side of this um, service via drag and drop. I add it here, just like you. You know it. Uh, from the old world, I store the panel, close this one again. I make it an MDI panel so that it won't uh, disappear in the background. Um, let's start the communication again. Scroll down here, uh, add a new value. And then you see, okay, here it was transmitted. Um, the 24 here on abstract way. And then here you see in the detail view, the, no, the complete serialized data, IP, UDP, Autosar. So this is how it is working quite uh, straightforward. I think there would be many things to um, to more show you. As I said before, I'm sorry, time is very limited for this session. Um, I would be happy to welcome you again in the Q&A session. And um, if you don't have time when the Q&A session will take place, just use the contact me button, button then we uh, can uh, also set up a private session and concretely look on your use case and your question. Thank you very much for your attention and hopefully seeing you in the Q&A. Bye-bye.